Hi guys, Tony here. Welcome to my series all about NAD, the really important coenzyme that uh, is getting a lot of hype because of its anti-aging properties. I'm joined with Dr. Nicola Conlon, a world-leading expert in NAD. In this episode, we're going to be talking all about natural ways of boosting it. Cool. All right. Um, yeah, so if we finally just talk about like positive lifestyle changes that are associated with increasing NAD. I know um, I've heard Ben Greenfield talking about obviously exercise and fasting uh, boost that salvage pathway. But and then he talks explicitly about uh, exercising while fasted, even having a more synergistic effect. Yeah. So I think one thing that's become really apparent is, you know, these things that are good for us that we've been told about for many years, like exercise and fasting. Um, a lot of their, their benefit does actually come from elevating NAD levels. And the way that this actually works at the cellular level is that if you think about exercise and fasting, they're both inducing a level of cellular energy stress. So either there's no energy coming in because you're fasting or there's more energy going out because you're exercising. And what that does is it actually sets off um, AMPK in our cells. So AMPK is an energy sensor and it senses when cellular energy becomes scarce. And what that does is it actually directly switches on NAMPT. So it directly switches on that main enzyme in our salvage pathway to actually upregulate NAD production. And this means that firstly, the cell has more NAD to actually create more energy to survive the period of energy stress. But secondly, it also has more NAD to actually be available to drive repair because the cell's thinking there's gonna be some damage here and we don't have any nutrients coming in. Therefore we need to repair and recycle and restore um, rather than be wasteful. Um, so for those two reasons, um, NAD actually increases naturally. Um, and you know, you can get some quite significant increases when you're looking at things like exercise. Um, I can't remember the exact numbers, but um, it, the, you know they were doing resistance training um, and, and demonstrated, I think it was about 120% increase in levels of uh, this NAMPT enzyme. Um, and that was associated with around the same percent of NAD boost. So, you know, just by doing some resistance training, I think um, high intensity interval training also has a similar effect. Um, you can actually be increasing NAD levels. And I think, you know, the, the logic of, of combining them together is that you, you're basically getting, you know, double the stimulus to AMPK right. if you, you're fasting um, whilst, um, whilst you're actually um, exercising. Um, and, a lot of our customers, they actually will fast and then take um, the product uh, with their first meal after the fast, knowing that it's got alpha lipoic acid in there, which is actually still stimulating AMPK to prolong the benefits of the fast, even though you're starting to eat, um, because it mimics what fasting and exercise right, okay. would normally do. That's interesting. Yeah. And then, so like other things, I mean, things that, uh, turn on AMPK like maybe would berberine would that even have an yeah. effect yeah. yeah exactly berberine yeah as well okay mm -hmm. cool and then alcohol I believe that's negative for NAD is that because it increases CD38 so mainly because it's involved in the metabolism of alcohol so okay. if you are drinking a, a lot of alcohol your body is having to use a lot of its NAD supply to help with the the pathway that actually uh, breaks right. down um because what and, it affects the Krebs cycle doesn't it it, it yeah. does affect the Krebs cycle and then other enzymes and alcohol dehydrogenases and things that are, are trying to break down the the, right. the ethanol um that that you're consuming so we do see um depletion of NAD in alcoholics um that that's, that's a very well known. Um, and often, you know, just to make a general point, when I talk about NAD declining with age, I generally show a graph that's a, a lumpy graph rather than straight down. Um, and the reason for that is that it's it's not the same in everyone because the lifestyle does have a big impact. So if you are not exercising um, you're eating an inflammatory diet, um, you are um, eating um, constantly, you know, every couple of hours and not having any periods of fasting. Um, 
and you're drinking a lot and smoking and sunburn and all of these things that um, are, are damaging your bodies and also not allowing natural NAD production to be switched on will massively impact your NAD levels. So lifestyle does play a big role. Um, we also know disease plays a big role. It, generally, people that have metabolic conditions, um, obese, obesity, diabetes, they tend to have lower levels of NAD as well. So it's, although it generally declines in everyone, that decline can either be, you know, like that, or it can be like that, <laughs> mm. depending on yeah. lifestyle. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and inflammatory foods, like say seed oils, I imagine must yeah. be, or emulsifiers, things like that must be really- uh, Yeah, anything urban. creating inflammation. And, you know, and this is as well, a link with the gut biome, gut microbiome. So, you know, dysbiosis has just been recently added as a- um, mm is a one of the hallmarks of aging there used to be nine hallmarks is now 12 because dysbiosis was added we know that having you know poor good microbiome can actually lead to inflammation across the whole body um, and then that can influence nad levels so it's everything's everything's all interlinked yeah and i believe even your gut microbiome can even affect your absorption say if you're going to take a precursor but they obviously yes. they don't know you know exactly in what, what biota affects it but i think there's, there's a link i know that there is, yeah, different people absorb different things. And, um, mm. you know, some the absorption of some things rely on it being metabolized a bit in the gut first. So, yeah, there's there's so many different factors that come into play. And, you know, in the future, I think we will have a much higher level of personalization when it comes to supplements. And um, when, when we understand ways that we can we can put this into practice. Okay. Hi guys, to help out the channel, do think about investing in your health and buying one of these tests I have available. And yes, I'm sure a lot of viewers do like to invest in supplements, but not so many into diagnostics. And it's a bit like a Formula One team buying modifications for their car and having no data to see how it's working. Check out these short videos to get an overview of all the data that you'll be getting.